Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. It is great to see you all, and I hope you all are doing good. Let's start the another interesting topics of WebRTC tutorial series. In the previous video, we have discussed about MCU topology in WebRTC. Today let us move to another topology. That is SFU. First of all, welcome all to Engineering Semester channel. Here we are providing new emerging technologies tutorials. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. We already know that in multi-party call, we must use an architecture for our application. This is because how the users are arranged will play an important role in the conference call. A topology refers to the layout of a computer network's selective forwarding unit, SFU is the most popular modern approach. In SFU architecture, every participant sends his or her media stream to a centralized server and receives streams from all other participants from the same central server. Here the device endpoints need to be more intelligent. Because most of the transcoding part are done in the device endpoint. An SFU is capable of receiving multiple media streams and then decide which of these media streams should be sent to which participants. Unlike in the MCU architecture, the SFU does not need to decode and re-encode received streams, but simply acts as a forwarder of streams between participants. Here one important point you should understand. The device endpoints need to be more intelligent and have more computing power than in the MCU architecture. To understand more, I have created a block diagram for MCU and SFU topology. In MCU, you can see that the most time-consuming activity is the encoding and decoding of the video. This is happening in the MCU server side. But in the SFU, those encoding and decoding activities are in the client endpoint. Server will only act as a forwarder and the computing power is very less. Hence the cost of setting up the server is very less in SFU. Here we can see that the deployment complexity is also very less in SFU than MCU. The main advantage of the SFU architecture is scalability. It is capable for handling more participants and server load to a minimum. Since every participant may send multiple versions of the same media stream, it provides support for various screen layouts. You can provide different quality of streams to different participants as well. Another advantage of the SFU architecture is the ability to work with asymmetric bandwidth. If you have higher downlink bandwidth than uplink bandwidth, then SFU is perfect for that case. Now you can come up with a question, does it fit all the use cases? The answer is no. Every architecture has its own strengths and weaknesses. The SFU architecture provides better scaling properties. It requires far less computing power on the server side. Suppose if you want three or four participants with different media encoding schemes, then MCU topology is perfect than SFU in this case. I hope you got a basic idea of SFU topology and how it is different from other topologies now. In the upcoming video, we can see how hybrid topology works in WebRTC. That's it for now. See you soon with another video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.